James Brown, Stevie Wonder, Cool and the Gang, but perhaps the most innovative and influential of all the funk bands were those super cool cats themselves, Funkalicious. And up next, we'll go behind the making of their astronomically successful record, Planet Funk. I think a lot of people thought we were all on drugs. And it's all thanks to Putney Curries. If you come across a bacteria bit, we'll pour curry all over it. Right across the globe, this is the Blue Parade. And oh, there she blows. It's time to get into this week's classic record from 1970. They may have been white boys from the Midwest, but they can still get down and funky with the best of them. And I have a feeling this is going to be a fun one. The band was Funkalicious and the album was Planet Funk. Well, hey, everybody, get your feet here on the floor. Gonna teach you a dance that you're gonna love for sure. The dance is called the goop. It goes a bit like this. It's a funkalicious craze that you really should have missed. You take a step to the left. Put your feet on your nose. nose. You wrap your leg round your neck. That's how the goop goes. As a young boy, Jerome Willis had a dream where he saw a group of musicians playing on the moon. He recognized the face of one of the musicians as his own. It was a real weird dream, but it felt incredibly real. And I took it as a sign that some cosmic force in the universe much bigger than any of us was calling me and telling me to surrender my life to music. The dream left an indelible mark on Jerome, and by the time he turned 18, he began looking for like-minded musicians to start a band. Detroit was quite a happening scene in the mid-60s, while with Motown and Beard Town, even Sideburn Town, but I wanted to avoid all that and do my own thing. And the first guy I got in touch with was Larry Ford, who at the time was doing a show at the local radio station, specializing in these hilarious crank calls. Half pepperoni, half Mexicana, and half ham and pineapple. That's three halves. Yeah, how much will that cost? How can you have three halves? Oh, sorry, is it not enough? I can add more. How about we make it half pepperoni, half Mexicana, half ham and pineapple, and half of, guess what? You're on the Larry and JJ show, and you've been stooped! <laughs> he was an absolute classic, man. But he was also mean on the keys. And I was lucky to get him. And then it was Larry himself who put me in touch with Stanky Hoskins. I'd been playing horns with Hendrix, getting paid in liquor, but uh, Jimmy seemed to be less interested in playing grooves and more interested in playing national anthems. So uh, when Jerome asked me to hop on board, I was all ears. Veteran sound engineer, Pitts Parsons. Well, Stanky is probably the most diverse horn player I think I've ever worked with. He can handle anything from a sax to an oboe, even one of those great big Swiss Alpen horns, which I'm pleased to say became an integral part of the Funkalicious repertoire. lineup beginning to take shape, Jerome's remaining task was to find a bass player and a drummer. Uncle Tom Tom I first met at a club in Detroit and I really liked the looseness of his drumming. I thought he had the right vibe, although he had this slightly unusual habit of snoring while he was awake. It happens even when I'm speaking, I've got no idea... <laughs> Why? It's not something I've got any control over, but uh, I've done it for as long as I can remember. I mean, even on my wedding day, with this ring, with this ring, I the wed. I. I I'm sorry, son. Are we keeping you up? I can't help. Help it. Then on bass, I brought in Cat Flap Curtis, who was one of the coolest cats I knew. But at the time, 
He had been having some problems with rehab addiction. I'd been addicted to rehab clinics on and off for eight years, and I wanted to knock it on the head and get clean. So I booked myself into rehab, but that just made matters worse. Well, Catflap, of course, had, had music running through his veins. He was the son of Johnny Curtis, the great 50s rocker, and I, I think Catflap somewhat resented living in that shadow. Johnny Curtis. I think he was also quite embarrassed by his father's illiteracy and innumeracy, which often wreaked havoc whenever he performed. A one, a two, a one, two, nine, five. Well, it's Saturday night, but I'm feeling down. Cause my baby lives ten miles out of town. She ought to be here hopping around. But my baby lives ten miles out of town. I drive one mile, two miles, five miles, three. When I reach your door, I'll be on my knee. I pass six miles, nine miles, two miles, four. I just hit five, that means twelve miles more. My baby's ten miles out of town. Two miles left, cause there's sixteen down. She's so fine, she's so sweet. I can't seem to stand on my own three feet. Flap Curtis successfully weaned himself off rehab, and by the spring of 1967, Funkalicious exploded onto the scene with a monster debut single. When you were a kid, girl, you learned so much at school. Like three times three and your ABC and the I before he rule. But now, girl, I'm gonna teach you. Teach you, teach you. Teach you about love. Teach you about love. But before I do that, you ought to learn about quadratic equations. You would seek that term. ABC. And polynomials of the second degree They are the quadratic coefficient, the linear coefficient, and the constant term, respectively AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero The Greek delta character represents the discriminant And when that is negative, there are two complex conjugates The funkiest part of the quadratic is it can be expressed in monic form X equals one over two negative P Plus the root of P squared minus four Q, yeah! A, B, C, funky as X, Y, Z. When applied to geometry, you will see that if A, B, C are real numbers and the domain of F is the set of real numbers, then the zeros of F are exactly the X coordinates of the points where the graph touches the X axis. Ow! Funky! That first single still holds up as an amazing piece of music. And I get a call at least once a week from Nigel Godrick, who's the poor geezer who has to produce Radiohead, and he says to me, Pitts, how did you get that sound on the Algebra song? And every week I say to him, by having a band that don't sound like suicidal mosquitoes stuck inside a modem. The Algebra song and its follow-up, Les Sandwiches, not only caused a stir on Detroit radio, but also caught the attention of record company mogul Otto Gannon. I thought they were black when I first heard them, but when I met them, it turned out they were whiter than the guests at a Mel Gibson wedding. When we first met Otto, he took us to a hotel room and started going on about how the housekeeping staff always fold the toilet paper into a little arrow, you know, the way they do. And he got on the phone and he made the staff come in and fold everything else in the room that way. The curtains, the bed linen, all the paintings on the walls, everything had to be folded into a little arrow. Even when he ordered a schnitzel from room service, he insisted they fold the schnitzel into a pointy arrow. He was very particular about it. You call it particular, I call it consistency. And the plankton who run those hotels should just be grateful I don't make them fold the fucking B-Day into a wee point as well. Take the bread and lay two slices down. Take a knife, spread butter all around. And pop some ham and put it on the bread. 